subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Rahul Gandhi and the Congress party have created a bit of a surprise, in fact quite a stir with their choice of the chief minister in Punjab. The chief minister they've chosen, as we all know by now, is Charanjit Singh Chenni. Now, why is he such a surprise? He isn't such a surprise just because of his name that he was an obscure leader. High commander and political parties make obscure leaders, chief ministers all the time. Just the other day, Narendra Modi and Amit Shah made Bhupendra Patel chief minister of Gujarat. Until then, nobody even knew who he was. In fact, a lot of the people even in Gujarat didn't know him. A first time MLA. So parties can do it. The surprise about Charanjit Singh Channi's choice is not about his name or his political background. It's about his identity. He is a Dalit. So that has led to a flurry of reactions. So one big reaction is, oh, six, six are an egalitarian faith. How can there be caste among six? There is no, they cannot be caste among six. Or a lot of people saying, I'm so surprised. I thought six were all one egalitarian people. There was no caste system among the six. I'm disappointed to know this. Others saying, no, 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 this is a political creation. There cannot be caste among the six. Others saying that, look, this is how politicians are trying to divide the farmers movement. Because farmers movement, the six are the engine of the farmers movement. So this is a way to divide the six. So I've seen and you've seen all those reactions coming in from all over. So first of all, caste is a reality in the Sikh faith. You can call it unfortunately, you can call it fortunately, you can choose your adjectives. I only tell you a fact. And if you want to see, if you are surprised that there is caste among the six, I can do no bet better than share just these two random pages of matrimonial advertisements from the Tribune, that is the preeminent newspaper in the north, particularly in Punjab. Please see this. First of all, see some broad classifications of the six. They are six Khatris, they are Jat six, they are scheduled castes uh, and others. And then you can also see that within these, there are sub -castes. For example, if you see among the scheduled castes, there are Mazabis, there are Ravidasias, there are Ram Dasyas. In fact, the new chief minister of Punjab is a Ram Dasya, which essentially is linked to the larger, old, we don't use that expression anymore, Chamar community. I'm clear, I'm carefully saying we don't use that expression anymore because a lot of the people in that community are now quite happy to use that expression with pride. And that is something that you see, say, in Chandrasekhar Azad, Bhim Army, etc. That don't be embarrassed about the caste that you have. Be proud of this. So there is now a very strong Dalit upsurge in Punjab. And that's about saying, Garv se kaho, hum Dalit hai. Or Garv se kaho, or say with pride, whatever caste I am. So there is that assertion. All the parties have been trying to reach out to that. The BJP in Punjab had already said that if they win, which is an impossibility, at least was an impossibility, uh, because BJP really does not have a leg to stand on in Punjab. Then they said they will make Dalit the chief minister of Punjab. The Akali Dal said, if we win, we will make Dalit a Dalit the deputy chief minister of Punjab. And sure enough, that is the reason Akali Dal went and signed up a, uh, signed up a coalition with Bahujan Samaj Party, hoping that they will get Akali Dal the Dalit vote. And similarly, Ambadmi Party was also reaching out to Dalits. And what is the reason? The reason is that this is again something, something that shows how ignorant we are of our own country. That you know, all these people who genuinely from the bottom of their hearts say, cast among the six, we've never thought they were cast among the six. They forget that Punjab actually has the largest percentage of Dalits in India for any state. Punjab is 33% Dalits. In fact, 2001 census when Dalits were cast for enumerated in Punjab and where data, certified data is available, that showed us that the percentage of Dalits at that point was 29% in Punjab. And Dalits were growing at a rate of about 22.4% per decade, which was 2.3 percentage points, not 2.3%, 2.3 percentage points higher than the rest. So the estimates now are that in a population of about 3, 3, 3 crores, 
uh, in Punjab, or maybe a little over three crores, crores in Punjab, more than a crore are Dalits. So everybody wants that vote. And this has not been a block vote, but we know some things about this vote. One, this vote usually does not go, bulk of it does not go to the Akali Dal. That is not the preferred party because that is seen to be party of the Jat Sikhs. The Jat Sikhs are the most dominant caste in Punjab. Now, how Jat Sikhs are more dominant? That also I will explain to you that casteism does exist in Punjab and among the Sikhs. But the caste hierarchy is not, not determined the same way as it might be in the Hindi heartland or the rest of the country. That means Brahmins at the top and Thakurs, etc. It, it's not done like that in Punjab. In Punjab, it has, it has come in, the hierarchy has been established more by history, economics and also because of some changes that took place under Maharaja Ranjit Singh in the 18th century and then under the British in the 19th century, particularly, particularly after the British conquest of Punjab in 18, 1849. Even the British, after they declared six among the martial races of India, six in fact among the most premier mar martial races of India, even then they kept the lower caste or what is today the scheduled caste six out of those regiments. So for them, they set up a different class of regiments called Royal Sikh Pioneers. So there were three or four battalions of Royal Sikh Pioneers which later got converted or which evolved into Sikh Light Infantry which still is one of the most decorated regiments of Indian Army. So Sikh Light Infantry is where Mazhabi Sikhs and Sikhs from scheduled castes have been recruited over the decades, over more than a century now. So that is the history and that is how deep set these caste differences are. Now this is something, uh, the caste differences within Sikhism is something that even the founders of our nation in the run up to the independence and the writing of the constitution, they were also seized with this. So Dr. Bhimra Ambedkar at one point, mostly in the 30s, even even debated the idea of a mass conversion of India's Dalits, India's untouchables at that point into Sikhism. In fact, it is when he found that it wasn't cutting with the Sikh faith because, you know, it seems if I read the analysts of that period that a lot of the Sikh leaders thought that we will get a lot of people who will become Sikhs from other parts of India and Dr. Ambedkar will then become a Sikh leader so we might lose our own political preeminence. So he found that he wasn't going to get much success there and that is why he moved towards Buddhism and he himself converted to Buddhism much later, but he did flirt with the idea of a mass conversion of India's Dalits into Sikhism to avoid the caste system. So as India moved towards independence and these final negotiations were taking place between regions, states, communities, Maharajas, Nawabs, etc., etc., at that point, Sikh leaders said that they were also wanted the scheduled caste status and reservations, etc., benefits for the lower castes among them. And Sardar Patel actually opposed it and Sardar Patel said this is wrong and I see these, these couple of paras that I have picked up from research in Professor Harish Puri's paper. So credit where it's due. Uh, so Sardar Patel said these converts, that is converts who became Sikh from Hindu, from Hindu lower castes. He said these converts are not scheduled castes or ought not to be scheduled castes because in Sikh religion there is no such thing as untouchability or classification of different castes. But then he also said, finally, that I concede that this is a concession. I concede this concession. It is not a good thing in the interest of Sikhs themselves. But till the Sikhs are convinced this is wrong, I would allow them this latitude. So these are issues that were even grappled with by the founders of our modern nation, including by Sadar Patel, uh, Bhim Rao Ambedkar, and others. I will only share with you the link to a paper by Professor Harish Puri, who is one of Punjab's most preeminent sociologists. There is much other writing by Professor Surinder Singh Jodhka at JNU and others on this also. But if you just read that one paper, uh, it's a 22-page paper by Professor Harish Puri, you will understand the genesis of the caste system in Punjab and also the unusual caste, unusual construction of caste hierarchy in the state. This is not like the way caste cuts or the caste pyramid is stacks up 
in other parts of the country. This is very different. So what happens in Punjab is the Jats have become preeminent. Jats, if you really go backwards, right to sort of Manu's uh, de uh, definition of caste, Jats would be like one category of Shudras, not not what would today be scheduled castes or OBCs, but one category of Shudras. In fact, there is an argument that Jats in Haryana, in Western UP, in Rajasthan have been asking for reservations. That we are not upper castes, we are also castes that need support. So Jats in Punjab, go back, take yourself back to Maharaja Ranjit Singh's times. And Maharaja Ranjit Singh, and you will see the periods on the screen when he ruled Punjab, his reign was very large. It went way beyond Punjab. It extended into Tibet. In fact, I read a book by Peter Hopkirk on spying mission in High Asia, something like that. And that talked about Maharaja Ranjit Singh actually sending his spies and even poison girls deep inside Tibet, uh, fighting the great game then. So his empire was very large. The Sikh percentage in his empire, this paper by Professor Puri tells us was just about 6 to 7 percent. Now, a Sikh monarch in a large empire like that. So, what he did was he gave a much larger percentage of positions in his army to the Sikhs. So, while the population of Sikhs under his empire in areas under his empire may have been 6 to 7 percent, his army was almost 30 percent Sikh. And there also officers, the nobles, people who led these various units, there also he chose six of a particular economic or socio-economic status. These were the Jat six. So Jat six then got large land grants from him. Jat six also got la powerful positions in his armed forces and that's how Jat six became the dominant caste in Punjab. That is not, that was not following the book that Manu had written. On the other hand, People who, who got left out as so-called lower castes, they were the ones who were left out as scripted by Manu. So when Guru Nanak founded Sikhism, he said there is no caste. After that, every Guru said there is no caste. Every Guru tried to bring them in. In fact, the very principle of Sikhism, uh, Nam Japo, Kirat Karo, Van Chako. That means pray to God work very hard, as hard as possible, and then share and eat whatever you make. That was about community building. That was not about caste. But what happened over time was that when you came to the Gurdwara, you were equals. But when, when, once you went back from the Gurdwara to your place of work, then caste determined your status, your social status, and your state of work, and your status in society. That is what also led to a lot of endogamy. That is, People, people of various castes marrying within their castes. And you can see that still going on if you see those matrimonial ads. So to make the short point that caste is a very strong factor in Punjab, especially to think that caste doesn't work among the six is wrong. Caste cuts very strongly among the six, except that the main denominator of who is the higher caste or who's the topmost caste is very different from the Hindi heartland because Sikhism doesn't have the issue of say Brahminism. So it does not work like the same caste system except for castes which are called scheduled castes. Now if you look at scheduled castes, there are 37 registered scheduled castes in Punjab. These are census figures. 37 scheduled castes at this point about 32 to 33 percent of total population of which 77% is rural. So if you once again see Punjab's population mix, Punjab is about 63-64% Sikh, rest mostly Hindu. But if you look at rural Punjab, it's almost 75% Sikh. Again, if you look at the Dalit population in Punjab, almost 77% of them live in villages. Again, they are Dalit Hindus and Dalit Sikhs. But 60% or a little over 60% of Punjab's Dalits are six. In fact, Kanshiram, who founded Bhujan Samaj Party, is from Punjab. It's from Ropad, what is now called Rupnagar, I think. And he is a Sikh as well. He's a Ramdasiya Sikh from the same, exactly the same caste group as the new Chief Minister of Punjab is, that is Saranjit Singh 
Chenni and Dalits in Punjab have had their own icons. For example, uh, Shaheed Udham Singh, the great martyr who went to England to take revenge for Jallianwala Bagh massacre. He's one among them. So Punjab has had this complexity. Somebody did ask me yesterday that, oh, I didn't know. I thought Punjab was a very simple place. There was no com complexity in Punjab. There is no part of India. There is no, no one square kilometer of India where people live, human, human beings live, and there is no social complexity. That is what makes India so cluttered sometimes, but also so fascinating. So we can also talk about this again and again and again and find more things to talk about. Now, if you look at the Dalits in Punjab, about 87% of them, that is most of them are Mazabis. Mazmis, Mazabis are mostly former scavengers or Safai Karamcharis. So Mazabis, Chamars, Adharma, Balmiki, Bazigars. These add up to about 87% according to census figures. Mazabis are the largest group at about 32%. Most of them are six, about 99% of them are six. Uh, Chamars are 26%. Uh, I'm rounding off all the percentages. Adharma are about 15%. Balmiki is 11%. And the rest are then uh, of various smaller uh, communities. Now you might think that, but I don't hear about this. You know, everybody wears a turban, uh, has a beard, looks the same. I don't hear about this. You will hear about this if you follow Punjab's politics carefully. The problem is that in our country, everybody has become a pandit on the Hindi heartland politics. We forget other parts of the country. So, some time back, when Akali Dal signed up their coalition with Bahujan Samaj Party, Akali Dal indicated that among the seats they may give to Bahujan Samaj Party to contest will be the seats of Anandpur Sahib and Chamkor Sahib. Now, Chamkor Sahib and Anandpur Sahib are two famous sort of holy regions linked to the 9th and the 10th Sikh Gurus. So 9th and the 10th Sikh Guru, that is Guru Hargobind and Guru Gobind Singh, lived at Anandpur Sahib. And Chamkor Sahib is where Guru Gobind Singh fought a very famous, almost a kind of last, last stand against the Mughal. So these are actually very uh, historic and import, spiritually important places for the Sikhs. And when these two seats, it was indicated that those would be allocated to BSP to contest by the Akali Dal, then Ravneet Singh Bittu, who is a Congress MP from Ludhiana and a Jat Sikh, he said he actually uh, attacked the Akalis for giving away Panthik seats to BSP. Now, what is Panthik? Panthik is Sikh Panth. So, if Dalits are also Sikhs, why do you object? But this was an instinctive reaction from the Jat Sikh community. And in fact, I will share with you a story that my young colleague Jyoti Yadav did on this at that point, explaining this difference between Jat six and other six, and she quoted S. L. Virdi, who is an expert and scholar and a Dalit activist, who said that this is Jat. This shows Jat, Jat six discomfort with the rise of Dalits. Jat, Dalits are such a large percentage of Punjab's population, but you find so few of them, say, in chief minister's office, in key cabinet positions, etc., etc., etc. So some of that, the Congress is now hoping they will correct. BJP tried to challenge this by saying, saying we'll make a Dalit a chief minister, but they don't have to make a chief minister banane ki, until they are in partnership with, uh, with the Akali Dal. BSP itself says we represent the Dalits and that's the reason that the first sharp reaction on Chinese choice by the Congress came from Mayavati, who said this is just a symbolic thing, just an ornamental thing. Congress will do nothing for Dalits. Obviously, vote for me. And this is something that Akali said uh, by promising the deputy chief ministership to a Dalit because this is 32% of the vote in Punjab. Now, there are other Punjab, other experts on Sikh politics and Sikh life and Sikh society who have spoken out. So, S.S. Jodhka of JNU, again I quote from Jyoti Yadav's story, who said that, look, Dalit Sikhs and Jat Sikhs have separate Gurdwaras. Now, in fact, if you go to villages in Punjab, you will find separate Gurdwaras. Caste is so sharply divisive in Punjab among the Sikhs as well. We may not see it from outside because too many stereotypes have got now well entrenched about Punjab. It's either this balle balle of Bhangra pop or these expansive rich weddings with shava shava, balle balle, mahiya music uh, of say uh, Karan Johar extravaganzas. There is a lot more to Punjab than this. It is a very complex state and 
like every other section of Indian society, there are layers and layers. Sometimes those layers mesh, sometimes those layers clash. That is the story of Punjab as well. So, uh, so in conclusion, I will quote Professor S.S. Jodhka again from Jyoti's story, where he says, look, Dalit Sikhs and Jat Sikhs have separate Gurdwaras and discrimination may not be as visible as say in Uttar Pradesh and Bihar in the sense that Jats will allow Dalit Sikhs to come into their Gurdwaras, but they will not be treated as equals, he said. And then he goes on to say that, look, we might symbolically treat them as, equal, as equals, but in real life, there is no roti beti ka saath. Roti beti ka saath, loosely translated means, people with whom you cohabit, people with whom you socialize, people with whom you intermarry. So this is a phrase which is, which is often used in Punjab. In fact, when the Akal Takhat, the holy Akal Takhat issued an encyclical, a hukam nama or an ecclesiastical bull, a Sikh equivalent of ecclesiastical bull or encyclical, a papal encyclical against the Nirankaris, that hukam nama also said ke aap unke saath roti beti ka rishta nahi karenge. So that in the north, in the northern states, Punjab, Haryana, is a way of saying who is your equal and who is not your equal. So he says that look, you, they might say that religion treats all castes as equal, but Jat Sikhs and Dalit Sikhs do not keep roti beti ka rishta amongst themselves. So that is what Congress is aiming for now, that, that sentiment that Dalits in Punjab feel left out under the Jat domination and they are now saying that look you Dalits have an opportunity. That is something that BJP has tried, that is something also that the Akali Dal is conscious of and Aam Aadmi Party is conscious of and that is what Bahujan Samaj Party is hunting for. It is a strange thing that while the founder of Bahujan Samaj Party was of Sikh origins in Punjab, Dalit Sikh, Sikh origins, he never really became very popular in Punjab, uh, never was able to build a true party in Punjab that could collect the Dalit vote as he did in Uttar Pradesh. Now this is also a time when the Dalit community in Punjab, particularly Dalit Sikh community is going through a big renaissance and resurgence and this reflects in the rise of the new Dalit popular culture. There is a lot of music, they are very popular singers and all the talk now is about Say with pride who you are. So don't, don't be embarrassed about the fact that you are from, from a certain caste. So you find a lot of this Chamar music and say, say with pride, I am a Chamar, Putaha Chamara De, we are children of the Chamars uh, by, by Rajni Thakarwal. Or there is this new Punjabi Dalit superstar, Gindi Mahi, who I bet you have seen on your TV screens at some point or the other. In fact, one of her songs, which has been seen tens of millions of times, is now almost like the theme song of the Bhim Army led by Chandrasekhar Azad in Uttar Pradesh. And that is Danger Chamar. So that says something like uh, we Chamars can be even more dangerous, which means even more strong, even stronger than arms and ammunition. Asle to Danger Chamar, right? Asla is arms and ammunition. Or there is another ballad by her, which is worth listening to, that is in praise of Baba Sahib Ambedkar. So she, she and many of these uh, singers have sung a lot praising Baba Sahib Ambedkar and Guru Ravi Das. And within that, brought in their identity with pride, with zero embarrassment. So there is one that she has sung on Baba Sahib Ambedkar, which is very, very popular, again, seen millions and millions of times, which is something like, Main tiha Baba Sahib di. I am the daughter of Baba Sahib Ambedkar, jina likhya si samvidhan, one who wrote the constitution. So you also see where you are drawing your pride from. So this is a resurgence and a sentiment that every political party is now trying to tap into in Punjab.